So finally, we have some cricket in South Africa where the hosts have beaten India by five wickets. Sanjay Manjrekar with a lovely return on ESPN Cricket Info Match Day. The result has not gone India's way, Sanjay. But if I have to start with what was the most impressive or standout feature from this game, where would you start? See, India lost a wicket on the second ball of the innings. And despite that, you saw the new batter coming in at number three, Tilak Varma, play as if he was playing the last over of a T20 innings. And that is the big takeaway for me that wickets fell regularly through the course of the T20 innings. But we also had fours and sixes being hit reg regularly while wickets were falling. And that is the new template where the selectors and the team management will have to wonder and think whether this is the way to play yeah. the next T20 World Cup or we still want the safety and security of the more experienced batters. So you liked the idea of starting with Tilak Verma ahead of say someone like Shreya Sayer in this particular game. I was a little surprised. In my playing 11, I had Shreya Sayer batting in number 3. I would have gone uh, in that way. But I wonder whether what happened in the 50 years World Cup where India had 6 right-handers in the top 7. Well, that contributed to India going the other extreme where every alternate batter was a left-hander. Uh, maybe that wasn't the reason. Maybe they just wanted maybe to have a look at They do want to have a look at the left-handers from whatever we can get from our selection team at the moment. True. And also yeah. the fact that when you have a plan like that, see what it does, Keshav Maharaj gets dropped straight away. He was the front-line number one spinner but gets dropped because India had that kind of a batting lineup. Maybe that wasn't the reason but little surprise. I'd like to still see Shreya Sayer right. at number three or four. All right. How good was Rinku Singh, who's almost making his case uh, a solid one, where he's undroppable in a team where not too many people who've just started off can be said to be undroppable? See, Ishan Kishan got an 80 against Pakistan in that Asia Cup in Sri Lanka. And I thought after that, he was undroppable. But he hardly played in the 50s World Cup. So who knows? But for me, at this stage, and for a while, he has been a player that India must uh, embrace and have him cement his place and it's a tough position number five is a tough position to bat but this guy has been consistent at that position and today he played you know not like a finisher he came in I think in the seventh over or the sixth over and he was there right till the end I thought it was a fantastic innings and we saw all that we had to see of Rinku Singh his first T20 international coming in South Africa in those conditions, yeah. you know, top-notch innings. Yeah, in one game, it wouldn't be too critical on the batting effort, which still got to 118 in spite of wickets falling. As far as the bowlers go, still very much, you could say, reserve bunch of bowlers in the absence of Bumrah. But between Siraj, Arshdeep, Mukesh, even Kuldeep Yadav, preferred over Bishnoi, who was oh. player of the series against Australia, and a return for Ravindra Jadeja. What did India's bowling miss? And is there anything you'd like in particular for these bowlers to improve on? I thought Siraj bowled well. And Jadeja bowled like he does and it's really up to the page and how the batters played him. It. It's not that Jadeja bowled badly. But Kuldeep Yadav, uh, you know, there's been an interesting change in him where he doesn't turn the ball as much as he used to because he uh, bowls a little quicker. That was what everyone wanted him to do. But I like the fact that he got Makram out with a slow delivery, tossed up delivery. So Kuldeep Yadav, Bishnoi, I don't know, there isn't much to really... Uh, you know, uh, select from mm. these two. So I wouldn't mind if Bishnu plays the next match and Kuldeep Yadav is rested. Tough conditions for Mukesh Kumar, but Arshdeep is another worry. Tends to go for a lot of runs, not as dependable as he used to be a couple of years back. All right. And finally, a word on South Africa, who are on the right side of the result. Riza Hendricks, some player and overall better team that won today? And batted in better conditions. I don't know why it's happening to India <laughs> in, uh, lately that they bat on the more difficult pitch and bat well and the team chasing like today they batted really well 180 was a good score at uh, port elizabeth i'm going to call it port I Elizabeth. If you'd yeah like because to. i don't want to go there hmm. and i played at the port elizabeth so hmm. uh, so 180 was a good score tremendous batting Riza hendrix not a surprise he's been one of the top scorers with quinton de Kock gone i think you'll see Riza hendrix come into his own and after that Markram has a striker of 149 which is better than miller and Klassen in t20 international so what i enjoyed in the run chase was just the quality of shots that were played there were some mind-boggling hits where just it shows how t20 cricket is rapidly progressing because of the shots that we get to see that Makram flick sure. for a six was unbelievable. All right, Sanjay, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. More thank from you. you as this series is only just kicked off on ESPN Rick Info Match Day.